Hey guys, how are you doing today? Hope you're all doing well. So I'm just jumping on doing another video here, a writing a channel that I that came in. And this has kind of been dropping in little bits and pieces throughout the week. So I'm trying to just gather everything and to just actually find a space to just sit and write. And so um, what came to me was the, um, you know, the topic of being a victim, right? And so there really is no victimhood right and because there's choice so we believe in the victimhood which is an illusion a delusion um our perception our reality the the view that we're seeing from from that perspective um so basically what dropped in the other day was that there's uh, there is no victimhood right and so we might find that hard to see but it's it's a construct, right? And it's not something that's actually real um, because there's only one love, there's only one truth, and there's only um, one source, right? And so from that comes everything else, right? Um, the further away you get from source, which is all the divine, you know, you start coming, picking up all these constructs and belief systems and things that you subconsciously unconsciously make up about the situation which is the view that you see through right your your imaginary glasses or your perception your reality right and so uh it's the view that you're looking at as far as being in victimhood there's no victimhood that's been created by source it's us who's created that reality and that perception that we're living in <laughs> when we're living our lives right that i'm a victim and i have no choice but choice is free will, and that's been given to us to navigate this world. So when there's choice, there's no victimhood, right? And so basically, it's about standing in your own power, not um, being a victim of the power, right? And so there's no other really word to use, you know. So the word victim is what we're going to be using, <laughs> you know, because... You're either powered or you're un unempowered. We, I mean, we can talk about it that way. Um, but there's been no victimhood that's been created by source. That's us creating that view, that perception, that reality, that we're victims of our situation, that we're victims of what's going on in our lives, that we're victims of what's being going on in the world. But if you understand yourself and your the way of the world and how we're existing in it, coexisting as one with ourselves and others and the universe, then you understand that there really is no victimhood, right? It's all choice. We get to choose. And that's actually in this book that I have, right? Um, this was a downloaded um, uh, information that came to me uh, as I woke up in the morning, and I have a video on that. But it's the healing the karmic overlay. It's the perception, the reality, the falseness of who we and think we are. And this gives you um, invocations and um, kind of like mantras, let's just say, right? It gives you some things here, uh, so like a passage and then an invocation, right? And so that's what that is. But um, it just gives you some of that uh, in there for each one. And so there really is, one of them is actually choice, right? And so that's, where is it? Let's see. We have awareness, suffering, right? Because in order to heal what's coming up within ourselves, we have to have the awareness of what that is. And until we have the awareness, we just keep going in these cycles, which is the unconscious version of ourselves, of what we're living. And I'm going to explain that. It has a little bit in here in this writing about that because when we're either in our power our presence moment we're either running on truth which is alignment with source in the present moment or we're living on or running on the past perceptions of our reality of whatever the world right, brings to us which is actually just a reflection of ourselves outwardly or we're running on programming of the past up to this point so one of them is actually talks about the path. One of them is choice, right? So choice, right? Know that one has freedom to choose, which is free will to stop the suffering. 
when one is done. So when you're done suffering, you have choice to stop it. There's no victimhood, right? And so that's your true self. When you are done suffering, there's this um, being that comes up within you that, okay, I'm done. I'm done with this, right? And so it's like this internal uh, rising within yourself when you know you're done with something. And then it's at that point where you're ready to do something because when when things are status quo and we're comfortable, you know, nothing changes. And so sometimes it takes us to get into suffering in order to motivate us, which is unfortunately uh, the way it is in humanity on a lot of levels. And so it's not within us at some point to change something if we're not suffering of it for, for an, enough, right? So for instance, if we we're like, yeah, 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 I want a house, but you know, that means I have to work more. That means I have to do this more. And, and I really don't want to do that. So you never get your house, right? So at some point, the universe will put you in a space, okay, they're asking, but they're not doing, right? And so the universe at some point will bring about something that will navigate you more to motivate you more into doing what you need to do in order to get that house, if that makes sense. So we're never a victim, right? It's choice, choice of what we're doing, how we are, how we're showing up, what we're thinking, what we're being, how we're feeling, our emotions, because we're not our mind, we're not our body, and we're not our emotions. These are things that are passing through. They're, the only time they are you is when you attach to them and think they are you, right? So when you're grabbing onto something that isn't who you are, which is true source, which is love, which is divine, uh, you become it. Right? So when we grasp onto things that we think we are, our reality, our identity, our perception, and our, 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 our wounds, you know, then we become it. And so that's where we get in, lost into the illusion of the scenario, the story that we're playing and replaying in our lives, right? And so for, what, for that without choice, one will be left in, um, will be left in. And so it's saying to surrender it, right? And so the invocation, when, you, when you're finding that, when you in, want to invoke choice, right? This is how the book works. I'm giving you an example. When you want to invoke choice, you have the invocation, right? So I have the power and freedom of choice, right? And this is, you could say this like mantras, right? To remind yourself, I have the power and the freedom of choice that which I know is thy will which is my will. I'm invoking my own will, which is the power of source, because your will and source will is the same thing. Source has given you the, the key, the power to your, your palace, your castle, your world, right? This is your kingdom. You have control over it, and you've been given the keys of it, right? And this is also going to help with that, <laughs> right? So I'm invoking myself into power. Right? I have the power and freedom of choice, that which I know is thy will and the power. Because when you put your choice in, you're invoking your will and your power, which is to not be where you were right, and to change your life because I have choice. And I can do this at will. I don't have to wait for suffering to come and push me along the way in the path to do and create what I want to create in my life. Right? It's taking the initiative. And a lot of people talking about take the initiative, stand in your own power which is invoking choice, right? I choose to do this. I choose to go to work. I choose to, not I have to go to work, right? Um, and I choose to be in my power of doing the things to get me to where I am going. It's not that this is the end all, you know, a lot of people um, kind of look at their job as the end all. This is what I'm going to do for life. But if you use it as a way to get from A to B, then it's no longer a space of suffering where you are. And you understand and put that to the forefront. This is just a stepping stone to something else, right? Because we never really stay in one place at, at any time at one for long, right? Everything is temporary, right? And so I will be of my own, wait, where are you? Okay, so which is will in thy power in which I will, that which I will, will be my own vice, right? Which is the path that I'm taking. So I'm either choosing, it's the path that I'm taking, and then it goes on to talk about the path. It gives you an invocation and kind of a mantra for that, a passage. So 
is, is the path that I'm choosing. So I'm left to my own vice, right? So, and that's going to talk about this here. So what is your vice, right? It's either how the world is showing up for you, which is a reflection of yourself, of what you've created in the past. So you're either running on the path, you're acting in the world as the world wants you to act and respond, and you're responding to the world instead of you being in control of your life and you showing up and you being dictative of the world, how you want the world, which is in control of your life by choice. So you're either acting on the vices, which is others in the world outside of you, or you're acting on past actions, which is, again, just the reflection when the world reflects that back to you, right? And there's a time span from how you're showing up in the past or of your lineage, you know, what you've gathered up until this point, which is your parents, could be your genetics, could be your um, lineage, could be your past lives showing up in this world, in this lifetime, which several of mine have, and that's been my healing point in this lifetime. So I've done a lot of past life healings in this lifetime. I've done a lot of self-work. I've done a lot, and it's been like a whole 10-year span <laughs> from the time of my awakening until... Um, still going on. I don't want to say it's over because it's still happening. I'm still working on myself. It's, just, it's an evolution. Um, and then, of course, you know, my family and lineage that I was born into, um, like, because you take up the body of what's been that they've lived. And if they haven't dealt with yourself, you're healing generational stuff, right? Of this body. This body isn't who you are. You're not your emotions. You're not your thoughts. These are things that are already here that you're participating in like the play of life that we're navigating and so when you agree to come in and take up these lives you agree to these things and these situations and a lot of people are like well i didn't agree to being abused but you did because you agreed to come into this body at this time in this generation for this purpose not that you per se uh, agreed to that situation Right? But you agreed to come in this body and everything comes with the body. The emotions, the thoughts, the beliefs, everything that you took up in this body. That is by choice. And so <laughs> there's no victimhood. It is all by choice. It's all by divine choice, actually, um, because it's creating something new. And a lot of people who have come in to heal their past lives, their wounds, their generations as part of this cycle to move into different higher um, consciousness, which if you're aware of it, you know, that is your path. If you're not aware of it, uh, you may not understand that as you're going through it until you awaken to it. And so that's part of what I've done. I've come in to heal all, all, the, all that, you know, in, in where I am, my past lives, because it bled through. Um, and it was really interesting on that because the 10 year span, which was the majority and chunk of healing all that, like on a constant continuum, like 10 years, like I really went hard into like, like getting it all out of the way. When I came to the end of the 10 year period, it was like I was in a whole new fresh space. And it was, oh my God, it was like so blissful, right? And so moving on from here to there, which is continuing, it's just not as intense as or as um, constant uh, as it was, right? It's just been evolving um, from there. And so what is now is the result of all the healing where I am, which is a much more peaceful way of being, more present way of living. My mind isn't constantly like going. I have, I can shut my mind off, right? And so shedding the ego, healing my past lives, you know, my generational, whatever it is that I took up here in this body that has already been here. And the book talks about that. All right. So we take up the body and everything is here, like I already mentioned. So having went through and healed all that through that 10 year span at an intense rate, just one after another <laughs> through different modalities, like, I don't know, I don't even know how I got through it, but my guys were there and they were so grateful or they were so helpful um, that I am grateful for their help and their expansion and knowledge that they brought for me during this time and to guide me through these situations. You know, I did a video on um, 
going through like the awakening. Going to do one on going home. Still going to do one on um, like the death experience, the angel, uh, the kundalini, and then helping me through meditation and getting into yoga, getting into where I was doing um, life review, you know, with the astro travel. Because you learn a lot in there and there's a lot of healing in that. So because when you can bring it to the forefront, we're actually able to heal it because we can see it. But if, if you don't know it's there, it's still under the unconsciousness layer, um, you have to do stuff to bring it up. And so we either do that at will or we do that as it comes up, right? <laughs> Which can take eons and eons. And so, but we have the will and the power of choice to start diving into our own self-conscious and our work and healing what needs to be healed. And so those who are healers that have come in for consciousness and evolution of who we are in, in this you know place and realm and reality to bring heaven on earth, um, you are, probably understand what I'm saying here, but for those who don't may not understand these concepts or what I'm speaking. Um, but in that saying that, you know, when I had got done healing that, it was really interesting because I knew when that was done, right? The main healing that I needed to do was done, right? And it was so funny because like it was like the shift from one to the other. And it was kind of like the catching up of energy and vibration. And so it, one day it was like I woke up and every pair of my shoes had holes in them. And that was so funny. It was so symbolic of... It's time to get new shoes. <laughs> it's time to get new shoes because you're on a new path. You're walking a new path because your body, if you understand energy and how your body is structured, like your upper part when you're, um, everything with your chakras aligned to all parts of your body and your lower extremities is part of like, so your feet represent your walking. And I learned this through energy, doing energy healing and working with people and my own energy and things like that, Reiki. Um, your feet and legs your bottom, right, is is where you're in your human self, you're, you're walking, and then as you go up, you're more into higher consciousness, right? So, but your feet are representative of, um, like, your path, right? And so your right foot is moving forward, and your left is your past or where you've been, right? And so when you can read energy, you understand the dynamics and body mapping of, of what's, and where everything is settled when when things are coming in and when you're working on yourself and your body. So that's where it's stored because it's a memory bank, right? And it's also symbolic of, okay, what am I bringing in and what am I putting out? Your right hand, your left hand, right? Your side of the body, what direction am I going in? So when you understand all this body mapping um, stuff and energy, you can't understand what I'm talking about. Um, so... When it had come to the, towards the end of that 10-year span of massively cur uh, changing and healing um, on all those different levels, uh, all my shoes, <laughs> it was so weird. It was like, it was like a timeline jump. It, w it was really interesting because I woke up and all my shoes had holes in them. And so I was like, okay, what is going on here? Like I was like, wow. And, I, and it was like I was in a whole new space, right? And it, so... And so I was like, am I, am I done or what am I? And I was kind of like, when you're done healing everything and nothing is of the old anymore and it's new, like you're in, in a new space, you kind of are looking for your footing kind of um, to kind of find balance. Okay, where, what is the next step? Where You're not running on the old programs anymore. So it's new, right? And so we can kind of feel lost at some point and trying to feel where we're navigating because it's not there anymore. It's this it's this separateness. It's this emptiness. Like, it's like something's missing because that's gone now. That part of you is no longer there. It's gone. And so you may feel the part of you that has gone or left. Like a part of you is missing. And that's what I felt, right? And so it was like this part of me that I've been living was totally gone, right? And so in that space, trying to feel my way, um, okay, what, what am I doing? Where am I going? Where's my direction? Because I've been doing this for so long. Now what am I doing, right? So I needed to find, stay on the path and just navigate from that point of my new space of being, if that makes sense.
And so like just trying to find your footing and trying to navigate from your new space of being, it was like this whole part of me, like just didn't even exist anymore. And it was like, I don't want to say it was like a gap or like uh, it was a missing, I could tell there was something that wasn't there anymore. And so it was like a new me, right? And so I've kind of went from the, I have three different lives, right? We have the whole prior to awakening, then you have the whole 10 years of ongoing, deep diving, shifting consciousness on many different levels for 10 solid years, one thing after another, like bam, bam, bam. And then <clears throat> it was unraveling everything, right? And so when you unravel one thing, another thing comes up and then it's kind of like everything's all tied up into a, if you would look at a present, right? Everything's all nicely right, uh, tied up into this uh, this present that you have and then it has all this wrapping and then you have like this bow right and so if you start pulling the bow off and everything just kind of unravels right like an onion right so the more layers you take off you know you get to the core and then all of a sudden right so but anyway it was the unraveling of all that stuff over that 10 year span and then I came to a point where that last healing was the major shift and I literally had uh, woken up and then like all my shoes had holes in it and so I didn't have any shoes to wear like every single pair I'm like how does every piece of shoe have a hole in it like I had to go <laughs> I put like some um, band-aid I forget what I did I put something on there I put band-aids on it I think on on the inner side because I wear flip-flops I put the um, band-aid on on the top part where my foot would rest so it didn't rub when I was trying to walk on the concrete in the places that I was going. Um, so, and then I didn't want to go barefoot. So <laughs> I had put some like a temporary thing there uh, for me to walk on until I could go. And I just ran to the store and just got some real cheap pair of flip flops until I could get to the store and um, get something real, you know, um, better for my feet. And so it was like, I got dumped all the sh other shoes that I've been wearing because again, it's symbolic. The, f the shoes that you're wearing are very symbolic of your path and your legs and your feet. And so when you have lower body extremities that are suffering and breaking down and deteriorating, a lot of it is due to your path, what you're doing, where you are, what's going on, right? And so again, your, your right foot is about your path forward, your direction. And then your left one is about where you're coming, where you've been. And so having had sessions with people um, on the lower extremities of their body doing energy healing, you could see that either when they were having issues with their right, you know, they're not going on their path or something's preventing them. Um, and so it brings it up to what they need to work on. So, and then also with the back. And then when they had problems with their knees, it was like the circle, right? And so that was indicative of like um, continuous cycles in their life, right? And so it was going from, Lifetime, the lifetime, the lifetime, like they're right and they're left because it was almost like from their feet to their knees and then the other knee to the knee back around. It was like a circle, right? And so they were just continuing on the same path and not getting anywhere. And so it started formulating on the uh, physical level um, of their experience. And so basically, you know, you can read the dynamics of the body. And I got into learning about reading the body and the energetics from the soulmate and i have posted a video on that um and so basically he had it was an intimate moment where i was able to get into that energy where i actually felt the beginning stages of cancer in his body right and so um he didn't know it and he didn't tell me but then he had told me after but that was way after we had parted ways he was a soulmate or I should say twin twin flame um, <laughs> um, but he had helped me understand that in our hands we can read energy so when we're able to get into that state and out of of the mind we are able to read things with our, our hands and that's why some cultures like if you're in India and things like that they don't shake your hand right and this is why I stopped doing some of these things because when you're <laughs> when you're touching things and whatnot, you're picking up energy from it, right? And so, 
we may not be aware of it subconsciously, um, but it is happening. And so that's why some cultures don't shake hands and things like that. Um, but yeah, basically that was the whole shedding of, you know, the 10 year span. And then for those who are coming in to, to work on yourselves and heal your lineage, you know, understand it from that perspective, not as far as being like a victim, right? Because we're never victims, right? If you're meant to be on the healing um, generation, right? Because it does come and go. It kind of like skips generation to generation, depending on where you are and who you came in and what your goal is. We all have goals, right? And so sometimes people who are channelers, of course, you know, it's not always my goal is to be a doctor, my goal is to be a teacher, my goal. No, we have a lot of people who are coming in, um, who are meant to be a person who's going to heal the lineage at that point. We have people who come in who are channelers of divine guidance. We have people who are psychics, um, who do what they do. Uh, we have people who come in who cleanse the earth. Right? We have people come in and work on animals. We have people who are, these are our divine gifts and what we're supposed to be doing. Not that being a teacher isn't helping, not that being a doctor isn't helping, but it's only helpful on a certain level, which is the human construct. It's not the divine construct. And so we may not really understand what our role is when we come in, if we've decided to take up that and be that in the world in this lifetime, um, unless you have, you know, the awakening or guidance to do that. So you may not, like I said, understand what I'm talking about. And that's okay. You know, if you're here just to be in the con human concept, to be a part of that on that role in that space, then that's great, right? But if you're here for a different purpose and reason um, to help awaken consciousness, to help heal the past to help bring in divine guidance, um, you know, then that you'll be awakened to your path. So not everybody's going to have this in this lifetime. Um, it may be um, maybe a next one or a past one that you've done it. Um, and then you're just continuation into something else. And so maybe your, this, your lifetime in this lifetime is just to chill and just to sit back and um, kind of fit in, you know, as a human construct and be the player in the play, um, not awaken. And that's quite all right, you know, and so that may resonate with you and that may not. And maybe that'll help you question and maybe plant the seed for a next lifetime or a future awakening, right? But everybody has a part and role in it. And we're not all here just to be teachers and to be doctors and to be, um, to be rich or to be whatever, you know, we all have our own sole purpose of being here and creating uh, what it is that we came in here to do. And in order to do that, we have to find ourselves and turn in and kind of step out of the, the mainframe of this human construct to see it, what it is that we are here to do. And that'll be brought to the forefront when we can do that, right, and settle in. And so when we can settle into who we truly are, you know, it's when we when we turn in and we question our existence here. And if you are here just to be a part of the play and the role to play out with other people and their experience so they can be the, the player in their experience, you know, it, it all makes sense on the grander scheme of things, you know, and the roles that we're playing, you know, and how we're showing up, what we're doing and who we're being. And but we all have a soul purpose and, and reason and contracts and things that we have agreed on and to experience, which when that happens, you'll know when you are meant to do something, it, it'll happen regardless. You know, those things will happen regardless whether you want it or not. And when those things happen, sometimes it's not always um, something that you would want to happen, but it's the healing from it that you get to have the awakening through. You get to transform that. You get to experience it from different levels that nobody else gets to experience it. And it's not that you're a victim or anybody's a victim. It's it's what we've agreed to when we take up and the contracts that we have um, in this lifetime when we are here and experiencing that we are showing up for, right? Because 
if you knew that something was going to happen that you didn't want to happen, would you participate in it or would you ignore it or try to run away from it, <laughs> right? And so these are things to kind of look at, you know, that's part of why we don't remember, right? And so why there's that veil between, okay, what did I come in to create or what did I want to create in my life? And so like, what did I come here to create? What is my soul here to create? Am I just a player in the role or am I in the awakening, um, self-healing? Am I here to be a painter and to bring beauty into the world, raise the vibration? Am I here to just be love? Am I here to be the opposite? Because we have those who are here to be that play in that role. And whether we want to believe it or not, you know, we, we choose these roles for a reason to be in that construct to be either a helper or a hindrance to our path and to bring about the awareness sometimes through our suffering um, so we can awaken and make sense of things and to learn. And so we're all part of the play, regardless of what we're being in our lives at the time. And so when we can really see that and accept it from that perspective, we're able to understand and navigate the world in a, in a better way um, instead of being or per se believe that we are being, you know, the victim because we're really not the victim. Um, it, ju it just appears that way. And so going back to the topic, you know, there is really no victim. It's all by choice. And so whatever we're choosing to come in in this lifetime you know, and take up the body and the form and the memory or whatever it is that we are creating, you know, we have choice within choice, which means we, even though we have choice to come into this world, take up this body, this form, whatever that is going to be, what is the plan of the animal or the human, um, we're choosing to take that up. But within that choice, we get to choose what we want to experience. And so we can choose our emotions. We can choose our thoughts. We can choose our experiences and what we're creating. So everything comes down to choice. There is nothing separate from us that is creating what we're not here to experience. And that's a lot hard for a lot of people to understand because no, we may not have maybe wanted to experience it in a certain way, but it's what the universe brought together of all the pieces gathered as the cooperative component to bring about the experience for you to have the experience, which is the creation, which is a beautiful thing if you think about it. And, and it's not always in you when you're in the suffering that it is, but it is because it's the way that it works. And having that awareness on how that is defined for each other is to bring about our awareness and our awakening our healing right and so it's everything is in our favor nothing is against us it's all here to help us maneuver and navigate through the world even if we don't want it so like for instance you know with the government <laughs> nobody wants to pay the taxes right and so a lot of this is set in place for our evolution per se, it's from here to there. It's never something that's set in stone because everything is evolution and change. It's just where we are in the moment of everything that's happening and going on that will help navigate and perpetuate change to another level. And so again, it's going back to, okay, where are you in your uh, readiness to change? Are you something, someone or some in your situation? Are you needing something to create more suffering for you to change or are you going to be initiative in your own life and take charge of it through choice right because we can choose to wake up now we can choose to think positive thoughts we can choose to get out of our negativity it's not easy right it's choice right it's choice is where you start now in the moment of awareness right i'm, I'm not where i want to be right is your awareness to the situation that is arising and so I'm not where I want to be so then now I have choice because I understand I am not where I am that I want to be in my life and once we have that awareness we can then make choice to make change 
So we can choose to get out of our negativity, our emotions, our awareness um, by detaching from it and knowing that it's not who it is really that we are, right? And so we, when we have that consciousness, we can understand that we can let go of the grips of what we're experiencing and thinking that we are when we're not. We're just here as the player in the play. And so, yes, we're going to have experiences, thoughts, emotions that are arising um, that we do want to feel. And I'm not saying don't feel them and don't participate in life and to just stand back. We can be the observer of everything. And being the observer is sometimes just allowing your emotions to flow through you, not who you are. There's attachment into your ego, your identity. When we step back, we can observe them and let it flow through. And then, okay, I, I understand, I accept, I see, I experience, but I, I don't hang on to it like this is me. Because when we do that, we are gripping onto it and it's taking us in that direction, right? It's kind of like, say, like this train going through town, right? And we, we jump on and we're going to go right with it, <laughs> which is our thoughts, right? Because our thoughts are there. Everything that's a thought is something that's been already and it's just coming back around, like the cycles of everything that is changing and turning and evolving through it. And so there's so many thoughts in the collective that we're choosing and we're, it's like this attraction of where we are in that space where we get more of, if you know about manifesting, you get more of what you think, right? And so you create. And so when you're choosing a thought, that's just passing, you're creating from that space. And so you can choose many different things. You can choose to be happy, sad, um, depressed, angry, hurtful, whatever it is that's arising and passing through you. So it's not who you are, it's a passing through. And when you choose it, you're choosing, it's like an attachment to it, you're hanging on to it. And so you can be the observer and just watch it and flow through them, especially during this year, 2024. It's gonna be huge, um, so you're gonna want to be more of the observer than the attachment to it, your identity, right? And so what is what is it that I came here, you know, to create in my life and my soul want to come and do? And what is the role that I'm playing here? And again, if you're just here to be an observer, be the observer, if you're here to hold the resident space for others, you know, do that, that if that's your soul, uh, what it brings joy, you do that. Right? but not at the detriment to you or others, right? And so that's the difference. But there really is no victimhood, and it's only unconsciousness, right? And that we feel like we don't have the power or choice or the ability to make these changes. And so that's okay because that's where you are at the time. And so where we are at the time is where we're meant to be, right? Because we need that experience as well. So everything that's being experienced now is what needs to be experienced through your journey because everybody's at a different place in time in their reality in their perception they're creating right because you're creating your own world you're creating upon the world of worlds which is what we interact with others and our relations and our related nest to it is our conscious and what we think and feel right and the view that we're taking of our experience like it's like a snapshot in time and then each frame leads us to a new frame, which is kind of like a set point, and it creates this framework of everything that's being created for us. And we live in that as a reality, a belief system, a creation, okay? And so every reality is upon reality in multiple dimensions and realities, and it's the expansion of evolution through all this that comes into play of the oneness, right? And so... Every time, every time one thing changes another thing, it's like the game of Othello. And I always come back to that, right? I used to love playing that game of Othello. I should get back into that. It's like when, when you have all these pieces changing and then you have another piece change and then another piece change, it's trying to get all the, the pieces the same uh, color, right? Because, well, in Othello, there's only white and black, right? And it's not related to races, but... You're trying to get all pieces white or all pieces black and you're against each other in that game is trying to get all your pieces on the board to align with that right and so it's this back and forth between them right and it's kind of like okay where are we navigating this world and it's just a play it's like the ebb and flows of life right and it's just trying to navigate the world 
on different levels and realities um, all at the same time and the experience that we're having together as one, right? Because you can't have a play if one isn't being one and the one isn't being the other, right? It's kind of like cowboys and Indians. <laughs> you know, one is going to be the cowboy, one is going to be the Indian, right? And so that's the play and the ebbs and flows of life, right? And it's allowing yourself to accept that um, and to be in that space, right? So, and but a lot of times we forget that we have the, you know, the control and the power over our own selves and our lives and what we're choosing is what we're experiencing. So if you're choosing to be what we call victim, uh, which really isn't any, because you have choice, um, then you're gonna be in that experience. There's nothing outside of you that's doing anything to you. There's no devil, there's no evil. It's what you're playing out in the role that you're projecting to others, which they're gonna reflect back to you, right? And so that's the darkness, right? And so what we are, creating is going to reflect back to us and come back to us. So if we're having a negative day, right, and then the next day we're having a good day, we're going to forget about our negative day and be in a good day. And then all of a sudden, the universe is going to reflect it back to you because it doesn't, it's not an immediate response. It takes time for that to build up and come back to you. And so somebody might be on the receiving end of that and be in their negative day and reflect it back to you. And you'll be like, I didn't deserve that. But weren't you in a negative spot the other day, <laughs> right? And so there's this time lag, and we don't understand. A lot of times we don't understand this how the universe works. But we're always going to receive what we're putting out into the world, so we can see it. And it may not be the same moment, same day, <laughs> same week, uh, but it's going to show itself in different ways. And so wherever we are in the mind, or whatever we're doing in our emotions, our experience, whatever we're creating. And so we have, like I was saying, we do have people here who are very much in their separateness from source, their divine, uh, on all these different levels. And so mostly they're going to play out the roles of those who are unconscious and creating the things in the world that we don't want. So we can see what it is that we do want because you don't know what you want if you haven't had the experience of what you don't. Right? Which is the conflicting mind thinking, okay, so I'm creating this, but I'm creating that. And so we're not aware of what we're actually creating, right? So you have to experience the, both sides, right? To really kind of make a, a real good sound choice in what you want, right? Because you, you don't know what love is if you, have, if you don't know what love isn't, for example. And so to be separate from the source, we get to see what love isn't on many different levels of the experience. So what you're being to your kids, to your family, to your, to your loved ones, your parents, your friends, um, people you don't like <laughs> that you're choosing, right? And we're all of all choice, right? Everything is of choice. So there is no victimhood. We're always choosing, right? What it is that we're wanting to experience, right? So you do have the power and it takes that power back, right? And put that in your pocket because you do have that as the keys to life. That's one of the tools that we should become aware of and understand that we can use to navigate this life. We always have choice, regardless of where we are. You know, we can sit and have um, health issues. Okay, what is my choice? I can sit here and waddle in this and keep going in this direction, just let things happen as it's happening. Or what can I do to get myself out of this, right? And so basically that's gonna be choice, right? What can I do to get out of the situation? Am I going to change the way that I'm eating? Am I going to change the way that I'm, uh, am I going to stop smoking? Am I going to start going for a walk? Am I going to, like, what are we changing, right? And so our suffering helps lead us to a place where um, we're able to make a choice. So, again, there, there's, there's no victimhood. And so, again, there, there's no real victimhood right and so basically that kind of goes into the the reading here um that i was saying right and so what did i come in to create or what did i want to create in my life what does my soul want to do or come in to accomplish in this lifetime so to create from a true space of awareness or not is the delusion side of it so there is no victimhood only the unconscious that we have the power and control over our lives 
And so we create our own reality in this life. We, when we come, which is to say why some of us are awake and some of us come in that aren't, right? So we have some that are awake and some that come in aren't, right? Which makes it even more interesting in the game of life to be of a consciousness that is awake while others aren't, to have that experience. So we do have people who are coming in that are awake and they stay awake, and then we have those who aren't, and then they waken later, and then we have those who don't waken at all, right? And so it's everybody's journey is different in where they are in that lifetime, right? And what their, what their play and their role is. And so there's nothing against us. Everything is for us, and we're all one, creating together on a universal consciousness, whether we're aware of it or not, right? And so when we're one, we can see that we are being true to ourselves and helping ourselves to heal and navigate this world on different levels, right? And so... It's the accumulation of those who are awake and those who are not, which is okay, right? So be okay with that. Um, it's the way it is supposed to be. It's not meant for all to be awake at this time, which is to lead. And so for those who are here to lead, which is not the leaders of the world in conference, meaning like our governments, you know, our school systems, our religions, but even them in their role that they're playing, they're there for a reason, which is part of the matrix, uh, Right, and so the constructs of the of the world, and so I had made a video on that, and so basically that's something that's been created, that's continued to create, but it no longer exists except for when it, you're participating in it. It's a construct. It's a matrix, right? And so if we were all to stop and step away from it and stop participating in doing that, it would fall down. But a lot of people don't have that concept in reality or yet, right? And that's been coming to me over the, net, the past year. Like if we don't participate, and as, as I've been awakening, things are just falling away. So I don't participate in a lot of that stuff as it is now to this point. So with those constructs in, in, in place and people are still participating in that and not leaving that, it's going to continue to stand. It's when you stop participating in something that it ends. And so for this whole constructs of the government, the religions, and things like that, you have to step away from it, otherwise it's going to continue. You're just perpetuating it. It's something that's existing already and already going. It's a cycle that's already been created. That's just universal and it just keeps going, right? And we put our children in it as we've been when we as we've been put in it, which circumvents it into something more, right? As it evolves. And so that is life in, in a way because it evolves very slowly along the path and the journey into something else as we change certain things and we fight over it and you know this is the right way and this is the wrong way it's a it's a good picture of the construct um it, from that perspective per se but if we all stop and stop participating in it then it all goes away if we all do it at one, we, if we all become in oneness and agree to not participate, in it, it ends. Instead of letting it evolve slowly over eons, right? Um, and so something to just look at because it, that's the way it is on our, our individual level. If we stop participating, it stops. If we change direction, it stops. And that's how it is on the macro with the world around us and others as what the role that we're playing in, you know, the experience. Um, if we stop participating in it, it, it ends, right? And so what is on an individual level is also on a macro level. And what's on the macro level is on an individual level, right? And so it works in both ways. And so, for instance, you know, uh, we have all the wars going on, right? And so if everybody agreed who are fighting the wars to put your weapons down and to stop doing it, Who's going to fight the battle? You know, it's an, it's the people who are in charge or the wanting the ones to fight. But who's the one fighting? It's the people who are fighting the war. It's not the people who's creating it, right? And <laughs> I always say they failed kindergarten because what is one of the some of the rules that we learned in kindergarten is to get along with others, right? <laughs> We're supposed to. So the rulers are the ones that are against each other and trying to conquer and take over. And so what are they attracting? Other people who have that within themselves. And so 
as you're going into war against each other, who is the one that's actually really doing the killing? It's the people who are being attracted to them. And I get that you believe it's to protect yourselves and to protect our world and to protect the United States or protect this country and blah, blah, blah. But if everyone who's doing the fighting put down everything and walk away, it's not going to happen. Because what's going to happen is the rulers are the ones going to have to deal with it themselves, but they're getting other people to deal with it for them, which is the armies, if that makes sense. So when you can start looking at things like this and all get on the same page, you know, things can change very quickly, right? It doesn't have to take time. You don't have to sit there and fight it out. Because who's the ones that are really doing the suffering, right? Having the trauma, the ones who are telling other people to kill or the ones who are out there doing the killing, right? Who's the one that's going to have to clean up the mess? Who's the one that's going to have to deal with all this in their karmic overlay and, you know, and kind of process it, right? But again, we all kind of signed up to come here. And then what we are doing as far as choice, we're the ones that are being responsible for that. Right. And I know a lot of people are going to have some mm, kickback on that, but that's OK. You know, truth does do that, <laughs> you know. But anyway. And so the, the leaders of the world in conference, white, such as White House, but those which are here to lead and awaken by the gifts that they are giving to discover and use them in the best way possible, which is to become not of the problem, which is of the past when they're using against themselves, which is humanity. So when you're using your gifts against others, you're using it against yourself. And when you're using it against yourself, you're using it against others, right? And so there's, because it's all connected, right? If that makes sense. And so when you use your gifts against others, it's against ourselves because we're all a part of it, which is humanity and a totality of it, right? Which you are seeing now arising, who did what to whom, and so it's all going to surface regardless, right? And so that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing everything surface, right? And for it to bring it to the forefront so we can change it and transform it, like what do we really want? And are you even caring? Because we're so sometimes ingrained and so used to these things going on, we become dead inside and we don't even, eh, it's a war. You know what I mean? We just come, it's like a natural part of, who we are and who we are is actually love, right? So we're just so ingrained into it that, you know, this is a normal process of life and evolution. And though it is, it isn't, right? And it's the way to getting to love because we get to decide in that space of what we really want. And so when we can all come to that space and agree on love instead of everything else, then we can create love from that space, right? So, and so it's on a micro or macro level. So what is your part in the role in the world at this time, right? And so where are you being? What are you doing? Uh, what did you come in here to do, you know, on a soul level to bring in the experience of, um, are you here to, to heal yourself? Are you here to uphold the energy and vibration? Are you here to clear the earth, to work with animals, to... Um, create beauty in the world, you know, what are these, uh, as an artist, what are you here to do, right? So in the creation of your part in it and the role, but having the understanding of how this all works, you know, can help you to navigate this world um, from a different place than what we do deem as a victim, right? Because there is no victimhood. There's and so many people are like, well, you haven't been in there and you haven't been in this space. I haven't been in your space or anybody else's space, only my space. But from my space, I've had the experience because we all experience the same thing. Not one person or one soul doesn't experience something that others don't experience. It's just in a different way of experiencing it. So one person, let's say, may have been physically abused by one person say, their parents, while another person will be physically abused by an uncle, um, or another one will be physically abused by their mate. What is the bottom line? They're being physically abused. It's the scenario that's different. 
and every scenario is different in little micro bits, which is a good way to explain it because no same scenario is ever happening again because it, it's evolution. There's no same replication of anything ever that's ever been created. It's all different. Even on a very minute micro level, it'll change something very, that's why things take so long in time to change unless you're taking conscious action, which is in the present moment. And so when you can change it from that level, you're changing it on a larger scheme of things and a dynamic than if it was to evolve in time on its own because it's going to take time to evolve and change on its own because it's in every little micro moments that something is evolving from one thing to the other in the space of time and the reality of where we are here, right? On a larger scale, if we can be conscious about what's happening and change it intentionally in the moment, then we are changing it more rapidly, right? And so you have both going on at the same time, and we don't really see that. We only see the outcome of it, which is the experience that's appearing before us in this reality. So like my, for instance, my 10 years of healing was intentional. I had set that my goal, my soul was here to awaken and heal and transform on a steady pace and rate in this time, in the present moment, which led to a whole new um, experience, right? And so as I said before, that whole part of me, the old part of me left, it was gone, right? And it's a new, whole new experience. So. But you have to really, <laughs> I know it's easy for me to say, but for you to really understand, you have to uh, experience it yourself or understand how things are evolving through time and the level of awareness that we're having it um, for that. And so to really kind of, you know, speak about that. And I have like a, um, a little video and a writing on that where how everything kind of evolves. And I don't know if I can find it really quick here on that. I've got so many, many writings, many, many writings. Um, but it talks about timeline jumping the matrix, um, which I'll do a reading on that later. <laughs> but Everything, like, is it's really hard to see if you're not seeing beyond the matrix. You're standing back, and so I become I've been becoming more and more separate from the matrix and standing back from it and not being a part in it in the play, uh, where I'm able to see kind of these things shift. And from that place, it's a whole different experience in reality. Um, and basically, it's just not participating in the matrix, right? So the constructs, they can fall down. And that's what they're, they've been showing me. If we don't participate in it, the matrix can, can fall down, right? But we're the ones that are perpetuating it by continuing by, to participate. And I did a video on that. If you don't want it, don't participate in it. And I had somebody unsubscribe because of that video, <laughs> but that's okay. It didn't resonate with them, right? And so not of, a lot of my stuff is going to resonate with everybody because you're not where you are on the path that this is going to make sense to you. Um, and that's okay, right? So I'm okay with it. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, like everything um, changes at every micro level there's always nothing ever the same it's all one creation there's only one of everything and the book talks about that on the main the main book not the pre-writings but the main book there's only one of everything that's ever been created right and so it's never the same it's never the outcome that's apparent and so it's what's happening through evolution and so like i said it's for example if you've been physically abused and maybe by one person one person but everybody's going to experience it on that on that level right it's and it's not really that we're choosing that experience it's how it's coming because the universe is bringing all these pieces and parts together for that to happen right and so that's the creation the evolution of it it's the it's the flower that's 
sprouting from the seed that's been planted of eons, right? And so that's all here. And when we agree to come in and take up the body or the plant or the tree or whatever, we're having the experience of that. And so that is choice. What we do in this life and who we are is also choice. So everything is by choice. There is no victimhood that exists. It's the role that you're going to play that may look like or appear that somebody's in their victimhood. But it's just the unconsciousness that they don't know that they have choice that they can get out of it. And again, like when we grab onto our emotions, our feelings, our thought, we're actually going into the human concept, into the matrix, into the the structure and, and the beliefs and whatever it is that you've created for the world that you're going to live in and have the experience and the creation of it. And so there's this in and out of the um, the experience. So you're either out of the experience being the observer or you're in the experience being the, the observed, you know, which is the play in the play, the role that you're taking up. So everything is by divine creation and divine, divine will um, and how you are... Uh, from the distance of the oneness, the true oneness, the one source, the one love, right? All is one love, right? And so that was another drop down in the other day. It says, um, there is only one love. Everything else is the cutting off of love, which is your emotions, right? And so your emotions, this is a long video. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to do a reading. Um, I'll have to do that in another one, right? And so your emotions are just there, um, it's the cutting off of love is your emotions, right? And so the further away you, you are from love, you go out of love, so which is the lack of love. But at the same time, it's the emotional scale. And so what are you, your indicator of your emotional guidance system is where you are from love, right? Because the further away you get from love, you're going to go to the opposite end. And so along the scale, you have the different emotions, right? And so what are you choosing like your mind? What is the thought that you're choosing? What is the emotion that you're choosing? They're all energy. They're, they're not physical in nature. They're energy, which is a form that you feel, which is why they're emotions. But your guidance system, where am I from source? This is the distance I am from source. So how do I get back to, to source? I feel better, right? And I choose to feel better. I don't wait for it to happen. Wait for the wave of happiness to come by <laughs> and grab onto it. I choose to feel happy. I choose to feel better. What feels better? This or this. Okay, I'm going to take this. What feels better? This or this. Okay. And Abraham talks about the emotional scale, right? That's what gets you back to love, which is source, right? And the oneness, right? And so um, there's no victimhood and everything you do is by choice to do it, whether it is consciousness or unconscious. And so we're making up our own reality as we're going along life and what we're choosing and picking and being an experience, experiencing as we're going, you know, through this life and the reality that we're playing. Um, and so basically, you know, there, like I said, um, the initial purpose of this was to talk about uh, the, that there's no victimhood, um, but the experience of our emotions, you know, just know if you take anything away from this, know that you're not your mind, you're not your emotions, you're not your body. These are things that you're taking up that you agree to come here and to take up an experience and use as a tool and navigate the life and whatever it is that your soul came in to do, whether it was to transform this life that you took on or to be a part and role in it, which is the unconscious and, and running on your background programs or whatever it is that you're doing. Or if you're just here to um, hold the vibration of love or to share and be kind to each other or whatever it is that you're in your immediate world. Or if you're one of those people who are um, wanting to change the world, you know, do it, right? If you feel called, answer the call to your soul and follow your inner guidance. Stop worrying about the people in the world outside of you because you have the choice, right, to allow yourself to act according to the world outside of you or to the world that's within you, right? Because we have both. But the outside world is the reflection of who we are. And so if you're seeing something outside of yourself, it's within you to change it, right? And so you're being called to change it and make that change, not only in your life, but outside of yourself, right? And so to help. And so a lot of people, 
go through a lot of things in their life just so they can help and help other people through coaching or um, channeling information. And they have these experiences because you are you you are not only just the story, but you are what you're creating, right? And so you have to go on the journey in order to be able to do it, not only for yourself, but for others, right? And so in that, you are the, the player in the play. You're not only the player in the play, but you're the transformer, and then you're a, the teacher. And so you become the teacher and the master, right? Which is evolution. And so we're creating from a place of where we've had the experience, we're stepping out of it, transforming it, and then teaching it to others, kind of like my experience. You know, I've had the pre-life, the awakening, and now I do what I do, and I'm sharing my information, my knowledge, and helping others through coaching sessions and things like that to help them navigate their world from the level of where they're at, not where I'm at, because I've already been there, done that, right? And so that's how we become masters of our own life, is by doing our life and then having our experience that we came into transforming that working with that understanding it doing the work self-work self-healing <laughs> you know awakening and then being able to help and teach and become a master at it and that's becoming a master right and so when you've met the master within yourself you're able to help and guide other people right and when you're able to do that you're transform Forming not only your life and continuing to transform your transform your life, but their life too as well. You're being a guide to them. You're not actually doing it; they're doing it. You're just being a guide to them to help them navigate their life, right? And so you're actually leading. And so this is the next step. Once we are at the master level here in this framework, we're able to navigate other realms on the other side when we're there, right? And so it's the human concept that we are where we are at the time that we are, and we're navigating the world from that perspective. So when we're able to do that, we're able to, um, you know, I'm getting the word channel, channel our own divine um, information and knowledge, our, our being um, from, that, from that perspective where we are. And if we ask for guidance and help, It'll come, right? It's when we don't that we kind of suffer because it's okay to ask for help from our guides and angels and masters and teachers because that's why they went through what they went through to be able to help navigate you from the other side here in this realm. But we have to learn how to, to do that, right, from that side of the realm and connect from this side of the realm. They're not here just to, as, you know, it's a whole different video about, you know, people who are in our lives that pass over. You know, it's not that they're going to continue to be our mother, our kids, our family, our friends on the other side. But they're, they've gone through this life before you so you can, they can help you in this life to maneuver this life and to guide you from that side in this, that perspective to this perspective because they can see more what's going on. And they have that play and role, and, and you work that out, and you've created from that space to help you navigate this. So it's okay to ask for help from higher guides and those who've already gone before you, right, the masters. And so when you master your life, um, you master yourself. And so you're able to move on. And so you're able to then become a master from that side to help others and guide and lead people are here, who are here, and that is my goal. Right, because I want to master where I can actually become from the other side to help, right? Others here once I'm gone. But I have to understand and experience and go through it and learn as I'm here so I can help and guide from that side and to help others master their lives. So it's just becoming the master of here, like Jesus, right? He mastered his life here. He passed over, and now he comes and he helps people here when you call. Just like all the masters, all the angels, all the loved ones, right? All our generations, right? As they've mastered themselves, they're able to bring in and help from, from that side to this side, right? And help to guide us uh, when we kind of feel lost and off. And so, you know, ask for help. Ask for guidance. It's okay to do that when you're feeling stuck, um, 
and like you have nowhere to turn. But anyway, it's going to keep going on and on and on <laughs> when I really just wanted to do a quick reading that I did a channeling on. So, um, you know, with that, but if, if that's the only thing that you take away from this video uh, through all this channeling information that just comes up when I, I, when I start talking, things just start coming out. If I don't stick to a script and it kind of just goes, um, because like I just, like I said, I, I channel right in, in my sessions and all this information just comes. But if I, if I don't have it like directed into a writing, like I, I'm often talking about this and I'm talking about that and I'm talking about this and I'm talking about that. And it's kind of like everything just whoo, comes in and it's all this information that's just flowing. So if I don't have it like a direct writing um, or script, per se, you know, say this and not really say this and say this and say this, but like a focus. If I don't have a focus, um, a writing that I can just make sure I stay on point, I'm kind of bringing all this information and this knowledge. And so it's just this flow of energy that just comes in with all this knowledge and wisdom. And so some of it comes from me, some of it comes from the knowledge of the ancestors and the guides and the masters and who's ever stopping in to help me to bring that forward to you. And so you may be able to see sometimes when I'm on the channeling and then when I'm talking from me, so it switches back and forth. All right. So um, looks like my battery's dying. So I'm going to wrap it up here and I will guess jump on and do another video here as far as, you know, the writing on that um, to get a little bit more specific in details on the channeling message. Um, but yes, yeah, so if, if you take anything away from this video, we're not victims. We have choice and use that as your key to your life. That is a tool that you can use. And you're not your emotions, you're not your thoughts, and you're not your body. You've taken this up to be a part of the role in the play. And it's the experience that you're either, cha you're either transforming you're creating from or you are doing whatever that it is that you're doing in the play in the role that you've taken up and your soul came here to do all right so i hope that helps a lot of information in this video so thanks for hanging out and staying tuned and hopefully you got all that information if you have any questions or want to book a session just let me drop it below and we'll um, set something up for you and I'm so glad that we had a, a beautiful day uh, that I can sit out here and do it because I just feel more in flow um, when I'm out here doing the videos than when I am actually at home. And um, you'll be able to see when I'm at home and when I'm not because I have that blue screen behind me. Um, but it's it's the different energies from there and it just feels like more flows when I'm out here in nature and kind of than when I'm in that space. So definitely um, tune in. Uh, if you have any questions, want to book a session, want to reach out, my email's there um, if you want to book a session. Then, or if you just want to send me any questions or anything like that, you can drop them below. All right. Like, subscribe, and share. Uh, I'm trying to get this information out to a lot of people as it's coming through. Um, you know, because it can help somebody, even if it doesn't relate to you or feel like you it's not for you share it with somebody else because it might help them right we're not all going to um, feel guided and connected to this video and it doesn't mean it's not for somebody else and maybe it needs to get to you to get to them because you know them so like share and subscribe the videos all right happy journeys <laughs>